was popping, was popping, was popping. Welcome, Nikki and Moose. I'm Nikki. That's Moose. What's up, Moose? What up, y'all? And we have a very special episode. It is that time of the year where we celebrate and recognize the late, great Nipsey Hussle. Born August 15th, but passed March 31st, 2019. Okay? So it's been four years and there's still lessons to gain. There's still origin stories we have to just unravel. And shout out to Earn Your Leisure, who went and had an amazing interview with the All Money In team. And we're going to break that all the way down on how it applies to your brand and to your business. Moose, how are we feeling about this episode? Man, super excited. This is a, this is a huge inspiration and it's only right. Four years in the making, we've I believe we've done three out of the four years. We've done episodes three out of the four years. And so uh, we're, we're going to keep this tradition going. Let's get into this intro. Two kids from Queens cut from a different cloth. Now joining forces, helping you to elevate your personal brand. Yeah, I'm talking about Nikki and Moose, bringing you a never before seen perspective into the mindset, the mentality, the behaviors, the driving force. But more importantly, the stories behind the people and brands that you know and love the most. And before we get into the episode, this is powered by Ecamm Live, the number one all-in-one streaming platform that will allow you to stream now on all platforms. I'm talking about Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, all at the same time as well as being able to pre-record your videos, video isolation, audio isolation, text on screen, transitions, everything that you need. And we're giving a 14 day trial on us at www.nickyandmoose.com slash ecam. Oh, I almost hurt myself on saying that. E-C-A-M-M, go there to get your 14 day trial on us now. Another celebration, Moose. Another celebration. Another we got more to learn, which is crazy. Uh, because we've done this for a little bit. We've a, a, and multiple times. I'm talking about like on the anniversary of his death, on his birthday, uh, yep. just cause like something new came out. And so Legit. we how how? Sway, how do we keep how do we keep coming up with things? I, I mean, to your point, shout out to EYL for, uh, you know, taking that that approach of of unlocking the origin story, as you called it, and giving us completely different and fresh perspectives. And they've done a phenomenal job. I mean, this is just an, a testament to their work and what they've all created. Uh, and I'm talking about Nip and his team, Black Sam, you know, just the whole fam over there to keep the legacy alive. You know, I, I've, I've always talked about... Um, that you measure a person's success based on the successors, the people that follow up after him. You know, when we talk about Miles Monroe shared that quote. And so he's definitely laid the mark, not just because he was able to impress people with his music and maybe some cool clothing that uh, captured people's attention, but clearly four years after people are still wearing the clothes, rocking with the brand, uh, obviously loving the music and, and staying in tune with that. So that's a, that's a phenomenal build out. Yeah. And in, in this episode, like I said, in the intro, we are going to break down the earn your leisure interview that he did with all what they did with all money in, but it wouldn't be right if we didn't have Nipsey at all on this mm -hmm. interview. Like it, it, like we have multiple gems all in one. Let's, let's, let's listen and, and watch. Establish a brand, like you know, that's what I see it as. That's what everybody. That, that's that's what America's about. Brands. That's why you can charge one hundred fifty dollars for some Nikes, and the and the shoes that pay less cost two dollars, and it's made of the same material. You feel me? Because of the brand value. So that's all you know. That once I got laced to that, I'm like, you know, let me let me start developing a brand. All money in, no money out. Slauson boys. That's the. I think people get in the situations of competing instead of just creating and doing what's true to them. 
You're gonna think that's the beginning of like your unraveling when you start competing instead of creating. You have to just stick to the script. Believe, have overwhelming confidence. Be your own biggest fan, your own biggest believer, and put it on your back and carry it away. You gotta be authentic and you gotta you gotta define your. You gotta make a contribution. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't try to copy right ways. You gotta you gotta define your contribution. The highest human act is to inspire. You know what I mean? I think the best asset I have is I'm a grinder. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm dedicated to the lifestyle of going hard every day. And I've been since I was a teenager. So that's in me. I just, we was raised to be grinders. That's what, what we identify with. And then I get a lot of credit for my team. They give Nip all the credit because I'm the face, but my team different too. Like if you put a camera on the team, you'll see what's going on. It's not a regular, the homie sitting around that smoke weed and catch the groupies at the show. That ain't the type of team I got. It's different, you know what I'm saying? All right, yeah, which one yeah. did? Yeah, nah, it's a lot to unpack. I got to start with the brand, though. I, I'm not going to lie. I think I think that, that that definitely, and I always say it, the thing that impresses me the most about Nip is that he had this perspective, uh, understood the strategy and the approach way before YouTube and the information era was was really out here like that. You know, today, for someone starting out, you don't realize how much of an advantage you have over somebody like a Nipsey Hustle because you're starting with all of this information at your fingertips. When Nip started, you know, we always go back to that, that first interview that he did when they interviewed him at 18 years old and he's talking about, I want to buy land and, and take care of my people. He's like, what? You 18 years old? The, it's crazy and it, it just shows you the foresight, the discipline and, you know, the, the way he really wanted to go about this from the beginning. But how he acquired that information is what I think you also you can't skate over that. You got to always give credit and acknowledge the fact that somebody was able to acquire that information, not coming from that type of background, but still able to get that 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 way of moving and and staying true to it and still making it happen. So. That's the thing that impresses me the most because absolutely, I mean, America is, America itself is a brand. You know, the, like the American dream is a brand. So I think all of that is a, is a powerful statement in itself. Yeah, I have to agree with you on that, that brand one. I think he, he realized early, and shout out to uh, Big Bob, uh, who was one of his mentors, right? But- he um he realized there's a lot of rappers out there and when when we look at it from you know our our perspective there's a lot of other people who are doing what we do whether it is from podcasting whether it is from consulting whether it is from merchandise whatever your niche your market is there's people who are doing what you do what makes us stand out and what allows our value to go up is how we brand ourselves. You know, he mentioned Nike and Payless, right? They both sell shoes, but one is more of a value situation and people will pay only a certain amount for Payless shoes to where Nike, we're spending, you know, anything from 70 to a thousand off of retail. OK, mm -hmm. off of retail. We're not talking about resale. You don't see no Payless shoes being resaled, but you see mm -hmm. a lot of Nike ones. Right. And that's all because of the brand that they've created and also the experience. And we'll we'll get into that. And, and another thing that hit for me in in the multiple gems that was given there was that last one where the team. Right. And we're definitely going to get into that where, you know, it it says a lot about the person, but it says more based off who runs with you and how that lasts even after you. Right. We, we have the all money team that does consist of, you know, uh, Kabi, Pac-Man, Jay Stone, uh, BH, uh, and, and, and more so we see them with all their different brands we see them when it's time to talk about all money and all come together but stand strong on their own and not leaning 
just on the legacy. And that's not leaning. They've made their own waves. They've had their own audience. They've had their own success. So I think it says a lot when we're building our own teams as well. Just like, okay, who do we have around us? Can they stand there on their own? Or are they somebody who truly leans on us? And which there's nothing wrong with that either. Like you're mm-hmm. going to need that support team, right? That That's going to also hold the, the foundation up of what you have, but what's going to push it forward as well. You need those people. And I think the all money in team is those people that push it forward and continue to, to allow that legacy to live through them. So those are just, you know what I mean? major major yeah the team the team you could never i mean yeah we we can't ever skip that part i think that's i mean technically that's what today's episode is about legit the team yep yep so uh once again troy rashad love you guys earn your leisure they have we we've covered I, i promise you we've covered like almost all their interviews but this one in particular you knew we were going to, and we've covered so much of Nip and his legacy, but to really get the origin story and where the brand, how the brand was made, how the logo was made, how the team came together, you know, just just why are certain experiences the way that they are. Uh, Earn Your Leisure did that. So if you if you haven't seen the full video, the full interview, we're going to link it on our show notes and probably pop up on, on our YouTube. But we're going to break down the what it applies as far as our own beginnings and our not just Nikki and Moose, but just those people who are starting to grow their brand, starting to grow their business and, and understanding where nipsey and all money in started like what what inspired them what triggered it what uh what mistakes did they make why did they go more towards owning why did they go this way so the very first one we we got to talk about just the marathon brand like where did that come from how 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 did that go about and shout out to black sam his brother um, I, I would say that was one of my favorite parts, even though it was the beginning, the, the breakdown between Black Sam and JP and how just the, the beginning of everything and maybe because it's his brother. So it, it felt a little bit different, but I think that was going to be my fa- That's my favorite part. So you're going to see a lot of Black Sam. I'm just letting you know this. Uh, Shout out to Black Sam. But here is the origin of the Marathon brand. Now, as Nip is working on the next project, he's like, uh, this next one I'm going to call the Marathon. And so I'm like, what? Nah, nah, nah. What are you, man? We going to run bullets ain't got no names to volume 10. (laughs) Like, don't, like, what you talking about? We on, right? He like, nah, nah, bro, trust me. And um, him and JP have been tapping in a lot and um, reading books on branding. And, you know, JP was taking photos, black and white photos, and he was really, you know, creating logos. And so he laid the vision out, you know, to us. And um, that created the Marathon brand. And I didn't fully understand it at that point, but when the project came out, I seen how wide it went. And I seen, like he said, he, he like, man, I don't like the energy at the shows. You know, we hopping off the of stages, getting into fights, shootouts and every, like, that ain't that, that that's not the energy you want to bring i want to bring like inspiration and so i didn't fully understand it but once the project came out and uh, i start seeing the difference and from that came the marathon continues mixtape and um you know the clothing brand trying to figure out what to call the clothing brand um came marathon clothing and you know like you say marathon og and just that those are the branches that came from you know from the Marathon brand. Yeah, this is powerful, man, because, you know, I, I think um, this is this is so critical because a lot of people have things going, but they don't see that as a brand. 
and for 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 several reasons, whether they think that brands only associate with personal brands, they don't really see the connection that way. There is a thing such as business brand as well. And so I, th- I think of an, and it's, it's crazy because some people will call brand as it relates to businesses, culture. And they're really two of the same, if you think about it, or one of the same, where culture is the common thing that people associate with what is acceptable and not acceptable in your ecosystem environment or amongst your team. In a lot of ways, that's a brand. You trained your people, you set out certain values, you acted a certain way, and that's become the norm of what is socially acceptable within that environment. Your customer experience is a brand, right? And so I think that the minute people start to recognize that brand, branding in general, isn't just associated with a person or something that you're doing for yourself, that it, it's, it's in everything, you start to want to in, initiate those things a little bit more re- regularly and with a lot more uh, intention, if you will, because for him to make that move from something that was already working, but again, I go back to that word, have the foresight to say, okay, if we flow with this name, mm-hmm. I don't know how much of a runway we're going to have. Right. But even the switch from you know, what they had with bullets ain't got no names to the marathon. It's like, no, the marathon is a long thing. Like I want this thing to be forever. So it, it it's as much as vision and strategy come together, right? It's like, no, let me, let me, let me speak this into existence. I want this thing to run forever, but also because I want people to start having a, almost a, a connection with what we're doing other than what we're putting out with the way the, you know, the, the mixtapes were being labeled at that time, which is only relevant for a specific group, if you really think about it, just based on the name. So I, I like the, of course, that that move early on. But to all the listeners, man, just know that what you have is a brand, whether it be personal or business. There are things that you're doing that you can start to just add simple colors or do like certain things to it immediately. It goes from, oh, this thing that I do just every so often to, oh, there's a, there's a system to this after all. There's like a method behind the madness. So I, I, I appreciate uh, people who take things serious when you almost have no reason to. Yeah, I like, I like what you said about the name because it, it makes me think more of at the, he was thinking at the time with bullets have no name to then switch it to the future, Mm -hmm. right? I think when we speak on branding, some of us are just so focused on what's happening now to our audience now and to the environment that we're in now and what we are trying to solve now. And where we have to sit and think about the five year, 10 year plan, right? and does that vision match with the name? But also in, in that same context, like Sam said, hey, the energy change. What is our brand attracting? Like what kind of energy is it attracting? And what kind of energy are we giving out as well? That's very important. Just with the name, it gives a certain type of energy to mm. where... One was of of a gang culture and a violent uh, situation to where now we're talking about a mindset. Now we're talking about legacy. Now we're talking about longevity. That's two different situations, which you can then attract, you know, a, a, a mass crowd where there's nothing wrong. And, and let me be cautious with this because there's nothing wrong with talking to a specific group of people, right? There's nothing wrong with that. If that's where you see your vision in the next five to 10 years of still serving those people, by all means, get the right brand name, get the right right logo, get the right mission statement, right? Give the right tone, 
figured that out, imagery, visuals that all match that specifically talk to that group of people. Absolutely. But with Nip, he saw it to reach the masses. It's not just about that group of people he was involved with at the time, not even just L.A. It was more, let me give the truth to the world. Let me change the mindset to the world. Let me let me build uh, the mindset of longevity to everybody because that's what I'm dealing with, right? So when we are looking at what is our brand name, what is the energy that it's producing, what is the energy that it's receiving because he was getting fights at his shows. Mm. In that interview, Black Sam said, it went from having fights and he didn't like that energy to people approaching with resumes. Mm. Two different types, right? And when we are thinking about growing as a brand, scaling as a brand, we have to attract the right energy because at the same time, remember, we're going to grow a team down the line. And how are we supposed to attract the right team players if we're putting out the wrong energy? Yeah. And it, it, and some people don't even think it's that deep. Like, yo, it's just a name. Like, no, it it's not just a name. It represents who you are and who your company is and and the people that are a part of it. It represents a lot more. So that's why when when we're looking at these different brands and how we look at some as luxury, how we look at some as availability, how we look at some as the elite and some that are just like us. There's there's a reason to that based off how they brand themselves. So it's so important in the beginning, even if, even if you catch it in the middle, because he, he caught it pretty early, but he was already there. It wasn't, what are we calling ourselves? What are we calling ourselves? He already came out with, with projects that was working. But when we get that vision, when we get that purpose, and if there's a need to, to switch, switch that that's it switch because his stuff was working but was it working to where his new vision was no so switch if you see that so somebody may be listening to this now and being like yo this is the the confirmation that i needed it is yeah it is no no facts it's a fact but um, let's get into a little bit of the business side, right? Because also what Nip was known for, uh, and unfortunately, uh, last moments were in front of this was the marathon store, right? He was big on having a brick and mortar to where now they're actually producing the second store, right? And in the world of it being so digital, e-commerce and all these Shopify stores taking over the world, ads everywhere, they are still concentrating on brick and mortar. And so why is that? That's a lesson from bro, from hustle. Uh, just really lacing me and, and explaining it really to the whole team, just the importance and his vision as far as like having a place um, that you can come touch and feel, that you have to come experience. Um, like he, he, he was saying retail, you know, you, you got to own the retail and you got to be able to, you know, make it special and, and, and build it out. Like he would tell us the, his, uh, you know, his version of San Rio, mm -hmm. like the marathon store. Like if you want to come tap in with anything that he's doing, marathon products, clothing the only place you can get it from is the actual brick and mortar store when i say we own it it's in the kids it's in it's in hustle kids um names um you know and, and they trust funds so when they get older 
Um, you know, this is something that they father and worked for and that they own. Now, there's there's a few things, but I want to go over one thing for sure is the experience. Um, there, especially when it comes to the clothing. After, after his death, I believe probably anybody and everybody was trying to get their hands, probably big retail stores of just getting the marathon clothing as far as just in stock in a, on a capsule somewhere. Like there was a lot of people that supported it and they just stayed true to what the vision was of no if you're going to experience the marathon brand and you're going to want to get the clothing or even anything of purchasing of the music it has to come from the source right and this this is really important and, and if we can do a physical situation right more power, like, please do, right? Because then it'll probably, what Moose will may talk about as far as the passing down uh, of assets that is going to be very needed. But the creating a space or creating experience that can only be in a certain location that you control, that your brand, your company controls, and no outside situation has any kind of influence on it is very powerful and it builds that safe and, and trusted place for your audience that they know what to expect that they know that this truly represents the brand and the culture where though we can look at it from a money side and of course they could have made probably a lot more money by wholesaling and, and everything to that extent and licensing their their name to to other people. But there is a you actually can charge higher if you control it all because no one else has access to it. Right? No one else can can be able to resale it, resell it, right? No one else can be able to provide the original copies of of maybe the the music they've came out with vinyls uh whether it was the gold edition whether it's the uh proud to pay editions uh certain different collections with the clothes like I'm I'm wearing one and as we're building out our own brands there does need to be that flagship situation it could be an app for those people who are digital. It could be, um, you know, a certain membership website. It could be even even from a free standpoint, it could be a Discord server. Whatever you want to do, there still has to be a flagship that it is. They could only get this product here, this information here this service over here and they can't get it anywhere else that you can control the experience. So we, we look at the marathon, uh, clothing store. That was a smart store. That is where you can go in, use your phone, scan a tag, and it creates a digital experience right on your phone. You get to see exclusive videos, hear exclusive songs, uh, you know, see things and hear things that maybe not the e-commerce people get to experience. And that's another thing of how do you make the physical location different than the digital experience? That's a whole nother topic we could talk about that is very crucial in order to still bring traffic because there are a lot of brick and mortar places that are closing down or have closed down because of e-commerce and because of our digital world that we're in, people are not focusing on how do we make it different 
I can go to Amazon and buy it and it's in my house in two days. You're telling me I order it and it's taking me two weeks. I'm not for it. So what is what is going to be the difference between the physical? What is going to be the difference between the digital? And that's, I'm not just talking about clothing. I, I'm talking about just anything that we have in our brand. What is the difference between the physical experience of it? Events, right? And the digital experience, courses, virtual events, right? So that right there was, and I'm only going to talk about that part of the importance of the experience and the importance of still having some type of flagship when it comes to our brand, because people want to champion and want to say, yo, I went here. I went to what the brand has as a Mecca right? Do you have your, your Mecca? Do you have, and we'll get into other things like flags and things like that, but what is your Mecca? What is, what is your flagship situation? Not location, but what is your flagship situation? I think that was the biggest lesson that I hope everybody grabbed from that particular part, from my end, at least. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's so good. And, and, you know, just to add to it, you know, I wrote here as you were talking, vision sets the standard early. And, you know, when when you really just dive deep into the, the mentality of Nip, that store and what he ended up doing in that entire shopping center, it wasn't just about the business or the brand. It was also his approach of wanting to take care of his people, as he mentioned, you know, making healthy options or healthy food accessible to people you know, in that neighborhood. So it, it, it even goes beyond that because I noticed that the idea of wanting to be digital or taking advantage of digital has made people not see the full value of what it is to have a physical location or a physical hub or a physical experience altogether when it comes to your business. You know, you mentioned companies like Amazon or drop shipping who typically take care of the merchandise size side of a digital brand or a digital business, but they to some somewhere somewhere they have a physical location, and so I've always talked about vertical integration, which quite honestly was a lesson that I learned from Nip in wanting to bring all of those distributions or all of those different sectors into his business, and we'll we'll kind of expand on that when we talk about the team a little bit more. But that's that same construct. If I can put opportunities inside of my own ecosystem, that's less stuff that I have to do. Last thing I want to say is I really do believe that physical locations and physical hubs help to accelerate the growth of a brand because it gives you a space where people can come and build culture together. Right. You're 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 expanding a vision. You're touching the same ideas regularly and consistently together. And so I'm not saying that this is the idea for everyone, or this is the, the thought pro perspective that everyone has as it relates to physical locations, because for a while, what I've started to sense is that people in business look at, especially those who want to utilize and leverage social media and, and the digital space, they looked at these physical locations or physical assets of any kind, a storefront, a warehouse, whatever it may be, as a crutch or as an inconvenience. But in reality, that is a huge advantage that you can bring into what you're doing, especially if leveraged correctly. And even more so importantly, if you can create that space for people to come and work at, you know, like you hear this conversation about uh, big CEOs telling uh, you know, members to go back to the office, uh, no more work for home, like that whole fight. Um, literally, it goes back to that. Can I create the space for people where I know when they enter this space, they, they're almost infected by the culture. They're infected by the brand and the things that we've built for them or what we're trying to accomplish here versus at home. Not to say that it's going, it's, it's not more comfortable for maybe them to work from home, but you're just not infected by the energy. You know, like that's something you can't replicate through a digital uh, screen on a daily basis, especially when 
the, those phases of a project where it can feel a little bit mundane. So I, I, I do have to credit that and say that move in general is probably one of the bigger reasons, which again, is it's also a blessing and a curse because as you started by saying that, that helped to really put a, a unique territory or mark the territory for the brand, but simultaneously, unfortunately, that's where his passing happened as well. So it's a, a blessing and a curse when you look at it in, in that light, but uh, a very a very powerful move nonetheless when you look at it in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, and when, as we go into this this next one, it's like there's nothing wrong with being inspired, right? So uh, you look at Nipsey's moves, like the marathon store would, had to be inspired by something, right? His, the, the wanting of creating a brand to stand out, that was inspired by some of his research that he got from multiple books, right? We've, we've gone over uh, time and time again about the, you know, the, the cheesesteak, right? The hundred dollar mm -hmm. cheesesteak and what, and that inspired the, um, the hundred dollar mixtape. Now, when we look at the logo, the marathon logo, uh, many people have thought that was like a, a cop of, of Supreme, right? The clothing brand Supreme. Well, they actually gave the real origin as far as the logo, but we want to definitely break down the importance of inspiration. Coming up with the box logo, our marathon box logo, the flag you alluded to, um, we took, we borrowed from Life Magazine. Mm. That's where the reference is from. Ours was from Life Magazine because the imagery that we created for the campaign was in black and white on film. When all of our counterparts and everybody was going digital because it was more cost effective and it had a, you know, you can upload it a lot quicker. Yeah. Uh, we went the complete opposite way against the grain and we went with black and white film. And then with the flag, that was, you know, every movement has its flag, so we had to have ours. And so again, Hustle, Hustle always came up with these like really concise and specific ideas. And then he just handed it off to me for execution. Before I let most go, I'm just inspired to do a flag now, deeper than the brand flag. Um, so if anybody wants to do that for us, hey, Nikki at deeperthanthebrand.com, let me know, okay? Yeah, anyways, go ahead. Yeah, you know, you know what's crazy, what comes to mind is that to, to a large extent, we know that best practices and fundamentals are essential, right? It's, it's those things that everybody should follow. But I love what he says there that when everyone was going in one direction, they did the polar opposite. Mm. Because at, at some point, you do reach that mark where when you find yourself doing the same thing that everybody else is doing, and it's, it's now going far beyond the fundamentals and the best practices that are just standard, almost like SOPs in a sense, that I do believe is, is you walking towards the end of your, your brand or your business, right? Because it's it's saying that you're not as innovative. You're not as willing to maybe take a risk or make something happen. So I love that they put that out or, or they made that move just early to say, oh, people are going digital. That's what they're doing. But you know what? Let's still go in this direction. As a matter of fact, we're going to go black and white or keep it black and white. It just gives you something different to stand out. You know, we've talked about well, one of my favorite books, Purple Cow, which is that same exact mentality, you know? So it's a, it's a fresh reminder to say innovation is simply doing something different that even in, in, in what is considered standard. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. And then you don't always have to reinvent the wheel, truth be told. I mean, you just look at something that already exists and saying, hmm, what if I just bring that over here and add my spin to it? So, uh, you know, I put here simple ideas executed consistently know, over time, powerful. How, wait, first of all, you're not going <laughs> to speed past that. Like, you didn't just say what you just said. That was such yeah. a simple bar. Because that yeah, was so I, powerful. I just, I just wrote it down because, you know, he was saying, like, Nip would pass me the idea and I would just execute. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about, like, okay, what does it take to create that? Right. Oh, it's, it's, it's communicating simple ideas so that they can be executed consistently. Over time, this is what you get. 
you get that legacy. And, and, and again, we're talking about almost brand and culture as two words that are interchangeable, at least in, in this, in this light of the conversation. And that's, that's what I imagine every person who has a brand or a business wants to be known for. Can you generate simple ideas that are executed consistently? Okay. I don't know how I'm supposed to follow up. I probably won't. Um, I think the only thing I will say um, is that there's nothing wrong with being inspired by the greats. Nothing wrong with, uh, and I think that is the focus of, of our podcast is what has the greats done? What is their blueprints that we can just put our own swag to it, our own wording to it, our own vibe to it, and our own authenticity. So when I didn't even know that it was Time Magazine, and now that I think about it, I'm like, oh, that makes so much sense. But here's, here's one thing I will say. Can we look at other cultures and mm. get inspired and bring it to ours? Because instantly I thought about Supreme. Yeah. Troy thought about Supreme. We looked at our own culture and said, oh, you got inspired by that. That's pretty dope. No. Why don't we think outside the box, get inspired by them and bring it inside our own culture, our own ecosystem. And and now it's a whole new new world because people are not used to that. Now you look like the innovator, like, oh, snap, this is fire. And really, there has already been a blueprint out before that makes your job so much easier. So sometimes it's thinking about, think, get inspired outside of the box. Stop looking inside of your own market, your own niche, your own culture, right? And look at what other people are doing. Start researching more on what other businesses, brands, cultures are doing that you can then put your own sauce to it and present it to your culture, present it to as as your brand. Right? I there's there's a lot of things that I've been inspired by Nip, but now even with that, I'm just like I've done the outside of the box thing before. I've been inspired by sports. We bring it into to deeper than the brand. I'm inspired by art, right? Bring it into to deeper than the brand. But like the the just the logo in itself, I'm just like, why is that so simple hmm. that I didn't I didn't even think about that, right? Yeah. So be inspired of things that are outside of your box and bring it to your side of the world and watch the reaction, watch the, and of course there's going to be a bit of, uh, you know, like an educational gap. Like they're not used to it. And that's, this is, this is anything that we bring in to something new into our world. They're not going to understand it right away. So there may not be a instant, uh, instant gratification, instant reaction to, oh my God, I love this. This is great. You will get some, but for the most part, we got to educate our audience to this is what our brand is. This is the language of our, of our brand. This is the culture that our business is giving. And so that always takes time, whether it's from visuals or whether it's from just a mission statement. So we just have to give grace to that when we do do things like a logo, things like a video, things like a, um, you know, a proposal, they, they, like it, it just may takes, it may take some time for people to react to it. But when they do and you stay consistent with it and you don't change up just because you didn't get a reaction, then people will remember it will be instilled in our brains. And it's a brand is not necessarily what we want. Um, our brands to be is what our audience remembers sure. that our brand is, right? It's what's instilled in our, in our minds, not what we want to give to them. It's what's instilled in their own minds of what the, what the brand is, what words instantly come up when they see your name, when they see your logo. So 
get inspired by other things and have and give grace. I mean, that's right. Um, this next one, this next one has to do with, uh, the team, right? The all money in team, like how, how sway, how do you have such powerful individuals that have kept, uh, this legacy alive? When, when you hear the marathon continues, it truly continues with people like Kabi, Jay Stone, uh, BH, Pac-Man, it, it truly lives on through them. But how did they get together? So, you know, originally we the, we the Slauson boys because yeah. we come from off of Crenshaw and Slauson. And, you know, Nip just, you brainstormed and wanted to do something different. And, and you know, his motto was like, was that? Like to be a owner, to have some ownership and whatever that we was doing. So he came up with that slogan, all money in, no money out. And it worked. And everybody from the team, as far as me, uh, Cuzzy Capone, BH, J Stone, Nipsey, Black Sam, Adam, JP, all of those entities, everybody is hustlers <laughs> in their own right. We got a different type of team, you know? So everybody, you know, like how you see Kabi, like you got Nip uh, about two miles down with the clothing store, the restaurant, the barbershop. You got Kabi down here with the clothing store, the restaurant, and so on, you know? So the, the model was just different. First and foremost, um, and, and break down this, and he he broke it down real quick. So that you have the marathon, and you have all money in, right? So all money in is more like the record label kind of vibe. That's more the music side, but also you know they have business over there in the marathon. That's ran by like Black Sam, JP, Jorge, um, and, and Adam, right? And all money in is everybody who copy mentioned right and then you know collective they're still they still are the marathon but the fact that he attracted like people who was like him hustlers people who go get it people who understood of having something on their own right um and kept them close through thick and thin all the ups and downs that they had between, you know, the raids, like they, they got uh, police, like shut down the Marathon store multiple times because it was like sloss and, and teas, where it was like, first it was a table, then it was, was, I think they leased it, then they finally owned it. It was just a lot of things, ups and downs between that, up, ups and downs between, uh, you know, record deals he had nip had a record deal went to jail you know lost that deal and then finally before his death you know signed with atlantic multiple deals with with puma but what you see is the same team which is rare right but it's, it says a lot of the importance of who we attract and how do we i'm not going to say groom because that's I don't, I don't necessarily like that word, word, but how do we uh, model them to be the, the mission and the value that we need of, of the brand, right? Especially the values, like who truly embodies the brand? Who true, like, are you really getting people who are just there to help you? Or are you there for those people who truly embody the brand. Mm. And I think those the his team that are 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 still representing those people who between the stores to uh their own products and services, they truly embody the marathon brand. And I look at it like they're even looking at like the team that 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 what we have and I have and I'm just I'm like I still seek people who embody just like that. Like that's, that's a goal. Like looking at, at their team, that's a true goal because it's like they come in as one, 
but they're all leaders, right? They're all, they all can stand on their own. They all, um, you know, everything goes back to the lessons that Nip taught them. And there was no ego. Like, that's, that's a whole nother, yeah. That, that, that just needs to be in its own session. Like, that's a, yeah, that's a whole, it's <laughs> a whole nother combo. Yeah. It, it's, it, and, you know, that's huge, you know, even amongst men, right? Females have their own, like, there's, we have our own ego situation. Men have their own ego situation too, but to come together with no ego, with just one, you know, common ground and saying, yo, Nip is the leader, but, you know, we're not far behind. It, that, that's, that's goals. That's team goals. I mean, yeah. Yeah, no, that's there's something there's something special about that um, that I think, heck, 98, 99 percent of the people never figure that out, you know, as to how to really put that model in place where the people who are on your team, they want to be a part of the team, but they're still leaders or they're pushing the brand forward to some capacity. Right. As you mentioned, that's a very fine line or a very find balance to strike with people because you just never know how to get one without ruining the other. You know, so I, I think of it in, and I, I, I've always just noticed this. Some people have it in them. Um, it's innate. It's almost natural. They just, if they put their name on it, they have to, they have to look after it as if it's theirs. Others need some form of return, right? They need to see that, okay, there is a great return here in my favor, and so I I'm going to do it. I used to be more against the people who have something to gain, and so in exchange you're getting their ownership or their loyalty or whatever. But I think now as business grows and we get even more mature in the business world, you recognize that to some capacity that is a part of the process. Unless you have a team similar to LeBron, Nip, where it's your childhood friends that you grew up with or just really close people that you grew up with and you all have grown and hit the same milestones and have kept the same mentality and expanded your visions together. Because that's the difference about a group of friends who you say you grow up and never talk to anymore. You guys have grown in your separate directions and that distance has gotten further. Versus you look at a camp like LeBron's with Mav and Rich Paul and all these people who every time they grow, they're growing closer together. And it's easier. It only makes sense to position someone as his or her own owner to help the collective group advance further. And so, you know, I, I just wrote it down. I said, man, um, you know, those who have ownership tend to take more ownership. Mm -hmm. And I mean by like you have an interest in there, so it's it's more likely for you to take after or look after it a certain way that the standard person who's just collecting, you know, a salary or an hourly rate or an employee, whatever it is, uh, they, they, they might have a restriction to that. So it, it's very special what they've built, but it goes back to, you know, set the example and empower people to, to go into those positions like, yo. This is uh this is ours. So not easy to do though. I, mean, I will not. I will say that. It's not it's, easy to do. Oh my God. It's, it's I mean, we may have an after show topic. It's so not. It's just <laughs> um, therapy session. Therapy session for real. Cause it's but at the same time, and not blaming nobody, but more of you as the leader, are you instilling those values and that mission, right? And there, yeah. are you seeing, are you seeing the signs and not being blinded because they're friends, right? Mm -hmm. Because these are, the, Nip grew up with these people, right? They yeah. were originally called the Sawson Boys. They, they grew up with these people, right? But at the same time, they nip like in that interview, uh, Pac-Man was like, yeah, he, you know, 
between him and BH, they they were told to listen to audiobooks, watch documentaries. And even uh, Pac-Man was like, I wasn't on it at the time. But I look back mm-hmm. and I wish I was. Right. Oh. But he, but now when uh, Earn Your Leisure went to Pac-Man's uh, studio, now he's playing documentaries. So it may not have been then, but the it is now instilled now where he's he has the books. You walk in, there's a documentary that's playing. You know, the, there's just certain things that are instilled. And in, in as as we grow as brands and as we grow as leaders, because we're all thought leaders and and leaders amongst our teams, are we being intentional? When we're learning something, we make sure they learn something. Even yeah. if it's the smallest thing, the quotes, here you go. The the books, here you go. Yo, I, you know, I listen to this podcast here. You, I, I don't think you understand how, like, that goes a long way of just, like, they may not read it right then and there, right? And I used to get frustrated with that. I'm like, yo, I think you're here. Like, but right, 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 right. once again, I, I, I consume, that, that's all I do. I research. I listen. I read, right? Um, they may not read it then. They may not hear it then. But you have no idea the impact that does later down the road if you are really trying to grow a squad as the all money in team, as as a power squad that not only has no ego and follows, but as well as leads. So I'll say that. Um, But with that. Uh, shout out to to earn your leisure. There's a lot more lessons uh, that we could have went through, but we would have been here for pretty much three hours, and um, it's already been kind of like an hour. So, uh, shout out to earn your leisure. Make sure you watch, listen to that full episode. It's about two hours. That's why we I said we could have went three. Uh, <laughs> it's about two hours. Um, Shout out to the All Money team. Shout out to Black Sam, JP, Adam, and the whole Marathon squad. But there is still so many lessons as we re-listen to these interviews, as we re-listen to some of even the social media posts that are there. Like we still continue to listen to uh, Nipsey's teachings, and at least for me. I know I gather something new each time. Moose continues to drill in certain ones that he's he loves into my head and that I tend to forget and then I remember again. Like, and there's just certain people who continue to teach on what's happening with Nip. Like says, shout out to Earn Your Leisure, uh, and, and other brands who continue to say is his lessons because through us the marathon continues and so if there's anything we can ask from this episode is that you share it right whether you share the audio whether you share the video some of the social media clips that you see this episode of uh when earn your leisure did it came out a few weeks prior to when this released and we wanted to make sure that this stay continue to go on even though they have viral clips we wanted to make sure on on nipsey's anniversary that it still lasts longer and so we're asking you for you to continue to to pass on these messages as well so we appreciate you moose yeah yeah i mean um i'm i'm gonna share a quote from from nip uh um you know for our final words um, I don't know if we got any other announcements or. Oh no no no! I got I got like, I got a, the the final word from him. So, but oh, I, okay, I want heck, you to close. No, no heck no. We so well. I was gonna do the same thing. So we we're thinking <laughs> in the same direction. So I, I'm. Like, I'm oh, wait. Thank you. Thank yeah, you for taking this yeah, pressure yeah. off me. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, here, here it is. So yeah, now let's do it. Listen, uh, thank you everybody, and you already know. Uh, the marathon continues. Creativity and competition is opposites. 
you know what I'm saying? And they are, they work against each other creatively. When you in the, when you, you, you had to draw from a blank canvas, you got to draw from your pool of experiences for it to have that thing in it. And you could compete and make something that's like technically good, but it's like a cloned human being. Miss all the dope that you, that only you can do. I can, only Nip can say certain lines. It's a song that only I can write because it's only true to me.